Hey, and welcome to episode 68 of Talking to Artists. So as many of you may have known, this uh, interview was supposed to happen yesterday at 4 p.m. because I'm interviewing uh, Suzanne, who is based in New Zealand. Unfortunately, we had a lot of issues with uh, Instagram, I guess worldwide. Um, and so anyway, so we were not able to do that. So hoping that we can connect with Suzanne today. And I'm just going to see, hopefully she'll be on board soon. And um, for people that did miss it, obviously it'll, it'll still be on my, uh, okay, Suzanne, I see you there. So I'm going to invite you on. And we will. It's a crazy day yesterday. <laughs> Hello. Hi, how are you? Good. We finally got there. Gosh. Oh, my God. Thank you so much for your patience. And I thought it was me because I'm like, oh, my goodness, my phone's been acting up all day. I can't get Instagram. I mean, my, my sister says, oh, I could see you live. I'm like, I couldn't see anyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I could see you. Um, there was an incredible crackling on the uh, line. And I could see you for a minute or two. And then you disappeared. And I thought, oh, I've got something. <laughs> I know. Me too. It's, it's so funny because I always assume it's me. Like I've screwed up. I've done something with the phone. And then I got a text from Petrov because they were trying to do live. And they're like, are you having problems going live? I'm like, yeah, maybe it's not me. Maybe it's a bigger system. Like the whole entire world is having Instagram issues. <laughs> yeah, well, I did have, um, they had something happen here too. But I looked into it and was actually later in the day. So it wasn't, uh, it wasn't my end, but New Zealand okay. was having problems. Yeah. So. Yeah. Anyway, okay. thank you so much for joining me. I'm so glad we were able to finally connect. Yes, so, um, good to see you again. <laughs> yeah, and it's so funny because, of course, last time I saw you, you were in Toronto. I think at the uh, um, that uh, oh, the cultural center, Nielsen. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That's right. We were dropping something off, and we were having a bit of a chat there. I remember that too. I was <laughs> thinking that's the last time I saw you. Yeah. Yeah, and so now you're back in New Zealand. So how did that happen? You obviously started there, I guess. Yeah, we started there, um, and we left like 34, maybe 35 years ago now, and uh, we sort of, we went to Toronto, then we went to Ottawa, and then we went to the UK, and then we went to Atlanta, and we had a couple of times in the US as well, and uh, then we went back to Toronto and thought, oh, we're going to stay here, it's, you know, fine. And we had had a couple of visits to New Zealand in the previous few years, but then my daughter said to us, I've never been back since we left, Mum. Would you and Dad come with us? So we thought, well, you don't go down something like that. So Absolutely. All our, yeah, so all our kids decided they'd all come too. Um, so we were all in New Zealand, and they more or less ganged up on us and said, you should be back living in New Zealand. What are you living in Canada for? So <laughs> our two boys really like New Zealand. They used to visit sort of every year. And uh, so we thought, oh, we'll extend our trip and sort of have a little look around. And so then we ended up um, coming here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so are, are, your, and are your kids still in Toronto or are they in New Zealand? Or? Well, my oldest one is, has been living in Sweden with his wife for the last five years. And they're just about to move to Berlin. And my middle son's a musician, so he's living in Nashville and with his family and my daughter's in Toronto so we felt bad for running off and leaving her. <laughs> no. Well they pushed you into it though they can't really complain. <laughs> no and they thought oh we'll come and visit you know regularly but of course now they can't which is you know really um, frustrating but it'll it'll happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, uh, my, actually, I don't know if he's, I call him my cousin. I don't think he's actually my cousin, but, uh, yeah, he did the same thing. He, he lives in the UK and they went and visited. And next thing his mom knows, it's like, yeah, we just, I, we're just going to scoot off and move to New Zealand. So yeah. it must be gorgeous. Time. Oh, it's probably about 10 years ago now. Yeah. I think they're just outside of Christchurch, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, it's, uh, I mean, it's beautiful here. When you live here, you sort of know it's beautiful and you remember it being beautiful. But coming back, we keep looking and think, oh, my God, it really is beautiful. And, I mean, Canada's beautiful too. Um, but I think the big difference between New Zealand and somewhere like Canada is that the distances are so small. So you can drive half an hour in New Zealand and the terrain changes completely. Whereas if you're in Canada, you you know, there's everything there, but you have to drive for hours to change from one <laughs> yeah. to the other, you know. Days sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. But we enjoyed our time in uh, Canada. So I think it's a great country, but we're loving yeah. it here too. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, I know. I have not yet been. I, I have friends in, uh, quite a few friends actually in Australia. So I always meant to go, but it's just, it's 
long way. So you can't really do it for a couple of weeks, right? You have to really have a chunk of time. So yeah, that's, that's right. If you're going to come and do Australia and New Zealand together, you really need to allow like a month or a six month. weeks. Yeah, yeah, because it's good to be able, in New Zealand, you can drive yourself around and, you know, just explore everywhere. So, yeah, you know, that part's nice. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see if your art changes, like if your influence uh, was yeah, just different. I think it must be. I think there's so much water around and so much bush, um, and I'm not really a landscape artist. I mean, I, I the other a week or so ago I was in the studio, and I've been a bit frustrated since I've been here about what I'm doing. And it was a windy, windy day. So I ended up with two landscapes, which is sort of like, not like me at all. <laughs> but yeah, they were okay. I've... You know, they turned out like, quite good, but it's not my sort of love, you know. So I'm yeah. sort of finding it hard to sort of settle back into what I really want to do. And, um, you know, been sort of trying a few different sort of things. And the other thing I find it's really hard, we're just coming out of winter here, but the winter's not like Canada's winter. <laughs> I mean, the average daily temperature is about 11 or 12 degrees. So oh, it must be tough. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the sunshine, it's, it's a very sunny spot where we're living. So, you know, it's so much easier to paint when it's cold and you think, oh, well, you know, it's lovely inside. I'm got the day to paint and it's no point in going anywhere whereas I look outside and I think oh it's so nice we could go do <laughs> yeah that that's a, it really interesting because I I mean I found when I moved up to the cottage as well I mean it's gorgeous and I love it and obviously I'm not complaining but it, it did take me a while to kind of be able to create up here and I think yeah. that's exactly it like when you're up in a beautiful environment you kind of feel like I should be out experiencing it. I should be going for walks and I should be watching the birds I should be going for a swim or a kayak and the reality yeah, exactly. is, is that it's still your work day, so you still really have to be in the studio working, right? Which is just a weird way of thinking about it. <laughs> That's right. Yes, it's very much like that too. And also, I mean, you're younger than I am, so I sort of think, well, you know, you've got to smell the roses, take time to do everything too, you know, because yeah. life's getting shorter by the day. <laughs> oh, I totally agree. I mean, you never know what's going to happen, right? So, no, you yeah. Don't. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's every every year. My New Year's resolution is say no. Like, start to say no to things and stop doing everything that kind of comes across your path. But so far, I'm not very successful at that. But I'm working on it. <laughs> every year, I work on it. <laughs> but yeah. this year, this year, of course, has been a lot easier since there's been nothing happening. So that's right. Well, at the moment, we're in a mini lockdown because the last year, like when when we left New Zealand after we decided to come here, we actually just got out of New Zealand before they went into lockdown. And they were locked down. I can't remember for how long, but they had um, some cases come in and they managed to get rid of it. And so for the last year, there has been no COVID in New Zealand. There's been people coming in uh, from overseas who have uh, they go straight into isolation for two weeks and then when they're free they um, are allowed to come out and that's what happened to us when we came back to live here we were in isolation for two weeks and then um, then they put you up in a hotel at no cost and you just have to stay there until you've had a couple of uh, COVID tests that are free Mm -hmm. So that's been fine. And New Zealand has just been carrying on like nothing's been happening for the last year. But then they had a case come in about two weeks ago from, uh, and it was one of the Delta variant, the uh, cool. variant, which of course is incredibly uh, spready. Yeah. And so they went into lockdown pretty much after they had the first case. And, you know, within a week or so, we, have, uh, we had about seven, over 700 cases because wow. uh, it just, you know, when somebody comes in, they go to four or five places and, you know, and then somebody went to church and it was a big church event of like 500 people. So we went straight into lockdown and we've been in lockdown now for two weeks and the cases are coming down. Yesterday we had 24 cases, which was down from 73 the day before. So it looks like we're getting on top of it again. And, oh, Auckland, and Auckland, there's different levels of lockdown. And where well, um, Auckland, which is the biggest city, is in the, um, the, the main lockdown, and then everyone around that is in a lesser one, and we may even step down to a lesser one again because all the cases are in Auckland, and only you know I think I think they have fourteen cases in Wellington, mm -hmm. so um, hopefully we'll get on top of it again. But we've been spoiled here because you know all the bars and the restaurants and the wineries are open. And... Don't tell me that's just mean. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, sports things and just life was just rosy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
but anyway, uh, we're just, you know, it's such a terrible thing. And, and um, so we're just, everyone's being pretty um, careful about and obeying all the rules so that, you know, we can get over it again and get back to that. Yeah, I'm hoping so. Like, well, you know, obviously we're having the variants are also going up in Toronto and I'm supposed to have uh, green cabbage down the first week of September. And then my show with my sister opens the 15th That's of September, right. then a show the following weekend and the show the weekend after that. So we all have our fingers crossed that we're actually going to be able to do all of those four shows. Cause That's right. Yeah. Well, we there's been really things know. closed here in the last two weeks and it really just, um, it really just, you know, people plan for months, years sometimes for something and then, um, mm -hmm. can't go ahead of it. But yeah. something I found interesting here um, is I think there's a really high standard of artwork here in New Zealand. I'm really impressed with the art that I've seen. A um, lot of artists, and I've met a lot of people too, a lot of artists who are really nice and super friendly. And uh, yeah, so. so. So how do you find your art community then? How, do you, how did you go about doing that? Well, when I was here on holiday, I noticed that they had um, a studio tour in the area. So I contacted somebody and said, you know, can you tell me a little bit about what the, art, um, what the arts are like here, um, particularly in the area that we're going to be living in? And so I met a couple of nice girls there who, you know, had a chat to and things. And so I signed up to be in that pretty much straight away as soon as the applications came out. Um, and so that's, you know, certainly got me to know. And I've had people that I, uh, when I posted, said, oh, we just live around the road from you, you know, come and have me a coffee with me and that. And I think that's the difference too. I mean, you meet somebody nice in uh, Toronto and you find that they're like, you know, uh, two hours in the opposite direction or an hour <laughs> in the opposite direction. You know? Yeah. Uh, whereas we're living in a very small uh, community, I think. There's two cities and we're part, a little sort of village that's part of one city. And I think there's 150,000 people in that area. So it's a small community, but yeah. it's a very artsy area. And so there's a lot of artists and there's a lot going on. And I've been, you know, you go to, um, I've been to a couple of art openings and look, there's a lot of local wineries around here. And so many of them mm. seem to offer their free wine for openings. So that's nice. <laughs> I like that business yes. model. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, uh, but yes, it's. Um, I found the community you know, really quite welcoming. So it's mm -hmm. really nice. Yeah, and That's amazing. very unpretentious as well. You know, which is yeah. nice. Yeah. And so you know, it's funny because I actually don't think I re realized until I read up a little bit about you that you're a printmaker. Like your work is printmaking. I I always thought you were a painter, but it's kind well, of. Well, I do. Uh, I do both. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that explains it. But tell me what a collagraph is. I've never heard of that before. Um, it's a form of printmaking, just like etching or um, a liner cut. But what I guess the thing you could sort of get a better feel for it is it's a bit like collage. When you make a print, you usually make a plate and it can be an etching and into, uh, so you etch into metal, you etch the design into metal. Or if it's a lino cut, you actually carve the design into lino. And most of those are where you're taking away from the plate so that the ink sits in the grooves. And then when you put it through a press under uh, pressure, the watercolor paper, if it's damp, presses down into those grooves and picks up the ink that's there. So you end up with the image. Does that, you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So um, with collagraph, <laughs> what you're doing is basically building almost like a collage. So it's both um, you add things to the plate and you also indent into the plate. So you've got high areas and low areas. So you can uh, put ink on the plate and it will sink into those low areas. But you can also ink the top of the plate so it, the ink is on all the high areas as well. So that when you put it through the press, you can get um, multiple levels and a very complex looking um, image. And and so are so, you working, so are you working on a metal plate then or are you building? I use, no, I actually work on, uh, you know, like mounting card. Oh, okay. Use, yeah, I'm mounting a picture. So I'll work on that and I'll add things like plaster and paint and cut into it and remove part of it and then ink it up. And uh, Whereas a lot of um, printmaking will be one color, I can have lots of colors on mine, and, uh, but only put it through the press once. So I don't put it through multiple times with multiple colors. 
generally. So, so each one's sort of a monoprint then, sort of individual and yeah, unique. Yeah, sort of, yeah, each one is a unique piece. Um, and a lot of people will try and do, um, you know, a series of the same, like with etchings, because there's not a lot of difference, you can get a series that all look pretty much the same. Mm-hmm. Whereas collier is a little bit harder to get them all the same because it's a little bit more serendipity and how it will print. But right. they have a really nice uh, look to them because they have uh, a certain amount of embossing because of the height of the stuff on the plate. When you put it through the press, the paper molds itself around those higher areas and low areas. So you get a certain amount of an embossed image. And so, so do you have a press? You ha- you shift a press yes. with you? So you have one? Yes. So what does it look yeah. like? Is it big or uh, how big can you... No, my one's quite small. I mean, it's probably the press bed, I think, is, is like 17 inches by 36 inches. So it's um, it's heavy. It takes two burly people to lift. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, it's probably, I can't really show you. you know? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we did like... Got a six on the table. And, um, yeah, but you can get really small ones. There's a thing now called an X box express or something which is a bit like a pasta uh, maker and they people do very small ones on those i believe they're very effective too Hmm. but uh yeah so when i was living in the uk i started doing printmaking and i really enjoyed doing it um the only thing i don't like about it it's incredibly messy well it is it is for me (laughs) (laughs) under my nails over my hands on my face everything around me ends up with getting it over but, you know, yeah. So, but I like that, and I also like uh, painting. So it's hard to sort of um, just stick to one. And they're quite so ha- different. Yeah. yeah, I can imagine. I, did, I mean, I haven't done really printmaking since I was in school. Uh, yeah. And I did a lot of li- well, lithography and photo lithography and uh, a bit of silkscreen, yeah. which I've always kind of loved silkscreen. But I haven't. Oh, I did etching as well. Actually, now I think about it. Yeah. Which is yeah. fun. Like it's kind of cool when you grind it down, use all the pressure, and then you kind of unwind it. It's sort of a bit like opening a present because you don't know, don't know yes. what you're going to get, right? Yeah, that's right. It's so much, yes, it's pretty um, exciting when you made something and then you, you're you sort of taking, the, you know, the felts up off the press and you think, oh, I wonder what it's turned out like. And so, funnily enough, I find often the plates that I like the best and think are going to be a really nice print are the ones I like the least, whereas the ones where hmm. I think that the plate's not very exciting often turns out to be a much more exciting print. But, yes, there's that sense of serendipity or something in it. Well, that's cool. And did you go to school? For, did you go to school for art or you just kind of uh, no, came, came across I always, it? I always wanted to um, do art. I mean, right from being a little kid. And my dad could draw really well. So when we were young, um, he would sit down and he'd draw things. He could draw all sorts of things really easily. And so I guess I always sort of did drawing at home as a kid. And then right. when I got to sort of high school, I wanted to go to art school. But uh, my parents were sort of very against it because the only uh, people that they knew who had kids who had gone to art school had got into drugs and sex and all that sort of thing. And they thought, oh, no, 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 no. We're not letting our daughter go and do that. <laughs> right. So I certainly wasn't, in, certainly wasn't encouraged. And um, so, yes, I, you know, it's something that, because I never did it back then, I always, it was what I always wanted to do. So I just found my own way to it when the time mm-hmm. was. Yeah. Well, I think that yeah. I think that happens to a lot of people too, right? There's some, and sometimes it is something like a move to a different country or something that, that's a, such a shift in your life that you kind of go back to something that maybe is sort of a bit foundational for you. Yeah, I think so. I think you know you basically have an idea of what you love doing right from being you know quite a child almost, and um, mm-hmm. often when it's not acceptable or. Um, or you, you know, like I didn't think my parents ever thought I'd make a living at it either. And of course, in New Zealand at the time, the population would have only been three million. And well, I mean, there weren't a lot of jobs in the art field um, that, right. would, you know, so you can sort of see why they did. But I think, as I say, you all have, everyone sort of has an idea maybe of what they really love, but sometimes gets watered, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and, and so when when you were doing printmaking and painting and stuff in the UK, had you was you were you doing this as something that was sort of like a you were going to do it as a, as a hobby and see where it went, or it was your sense that you were going to try and really build this into a business that you were going to sell well, and be a professional? No, when when I was living in Ottawa, I see you just come back from Ottawa. I lived in Ottawa for uh, thirteen years, I think it was, 
And so I was doing a lot of art there and I had a group of friends and we'd exhibit together and things like that. In fact, um, were you there for an art show or would you? No, I had a meeting with somebody who was interested in uh, tapping into Canadian artists and artisans that are kind of a bit more emerging and mid-career as oh, opposed to like the Charles Pactors of the world. So yeah, we'll no, see. Well, Something... uh, yeah, so I got sort of involved with a group of other artists <laughs> up there and we sort of got involved in um, helping start the art in the park and things like that. So it was quite a few. Oh, years I love that and, show. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You would do it. It became quite big after a while, but the first few years were really small. And we had a studio tour as well in the Glebe, which was really uh, fun with Bat Boy, who you may have come across. Yeah. And, uh, and then um, when we went to the UK, I sort of met a couple of other artists and I, would, I was doing art two days a week with a group. And then I found that there was a printmaker who lived in the little village next to me who was a fantastic printmaker. So I used to just pop over to his uh, studio and he had the most fabulous studio. It was uh, an old pub. So, you know, he was Ooh. working on the, uh, in this old pub, which was an old barn with character and everything like that. And he used to smoke like a chimney, so it was really, you know, sort of <laughs> hazy. And the toilet, she didn't even want to look at when you went in. <laughs> but he was, a, he was a fantastic printmaker. And so um, it was very easy for me. I'd just go over for the day and spend the afternoon there. And, um, yeah, it was great. So that's how I got into printmaking. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, I, I like I like how uh, I was reading that you also do. Well, I guess you're going to probably. I assume you're going to take up again do workshops. Are you still doing them virtually, or are you were doing workshops yeah. obviously in Canada before well, that? I, or? Yeah, well, I I uh, built an online course for Colograph actually, um, that is roughly eighty videos on uh, making Colographs, and I've sold that to people from France to Australia, New Zealand, the UK, America, all over. And mm. so that's quite fun. And I usually offer that uh, once a year. I'm a bit lazy about getting around to it this year, but I usually <laughs> do it in September. <laughs> I just sort of haven't got motivated to put anything out about it at the moment. Um, so I do that and I've got a, um, a workshop coming up that I'm teaching here for a local group soon. And I did something a few weeks ago for another group. So yeah, um, I do a little bit of teaching. I actually quite enjoy it. I find uh, it's sort of, yeah, I like to teach. Uh, I actually really like teaching in a, uh, when it's not being, when I'm not teaching in my own studio because my studio stays tidy. <laughs> <laughs> the mess gets made somewhere else. Yeah. And I don't have a big studio here, which is a pity. But yeah. So how do you go? It seems daunting to me to do 80 videos for an online course. How do you even start to build an online course or what makes well, uh, what made you decide to do that? It's just because I, I it sort of flashed through my head every once in a while, and I'm like, oh my god, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> well, I had no idea, absolutely no idea, and I sort of thought, oh, I could never do that because I wasn't even that tech, you know, oriented. So, um, and then I uh, was doing a little course on marketing, and a woman said to me, oh, you should be doing, you know, why don't you do some. Uh, a course and I thought mm, there's lots of people doing courses in painting and I, you know it's just why would I bother doing that and then I thought you know there's nobody really teaching uh colographs like uh like, like the way I do them uh the guy I learned from I used to keep saying to him why don't you write a book you know like you should write a book and people need to know all of this and he was <laughs> yeah you would know, laugh and I was bringing him half its jolly clients because I'd say you know well, he's a great printmaker come and do a course with him so uh, anyway, so when I thought about that, I thought, mm, maybe I could do that, you know, I know a bit about that. I don't know anything about vid making videos or, um, or also um, how to edit them or anything like that. I thought, oh, my God, no idea about that. But anyway, um, the idea is that you start with a, I started with a rough uh, layout of what I wanted to do, what I would include in it. But you don't want to plan it too much because otherwise, as people are responding, it may not be what they're actually wanting to hear or, or needing. Mm -hmm. So I actually I uh, did a rough layout, advertised it, had people sign up, and then I built it week by week. It's an eight-week course. So I be built each week. I was making it for the next week. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I learned fairly quickly. <laughs> 
how to sort of uh, do it. And I learned a little bit about how to, um, how to put it together. Um, I wasn't particularly confident about getting on, on the camera because there wasn't as much of it being done when I first started doing this, um, about getting on camera and, and sort of presenting to people. So I found the easiest way, and actually probably better for people, was that I had the camera over my hands so I could actually um, demonstrate and be doing it and talking at the same time and um, show the processes that way. So they didn't really need to see me, uh, mm -hmm. which was quite, quite good. Uh, the, one of the only things I found difficult um, was that I remember one of the people that was in my courses, first course the, that I did said, there's a lot of ums, and I said, yes, I know there's a lot of ums. And the reason <laughs> being, I find it incredibly hard when I'm, actually, um, when I'm actually demonstrating to talk coherently, because sometimes yeah. you're doing it, it's a different thing somehow that you're using in your brain, unless you've practiced it over and over and over and you're doing it almost by rote. But I think when you're just sort of creating on the spot, it's actually quite hard, well, it is for me, to always get the words in the right sort of order. But uh, so it's not, it wasn't a super, super polished course, but it's, somebody else said, it's just like being in the studio with you as you're talking and doing, it's, it's, it's very yeah. much that sort of thing. So, yeah, so that's oh, maybe I, So I just see a comment here. It's like, uh, we need a lot of help emerging <laughs> when we talked about this. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what the comment is about, but I think it has to do with the, uh, with some of those courses and stuff. And, you know, I think that I've, I've only done a few, just not a, even as a course, but just a couple of videos. And I find the interesting thing is, is that when you actually have to articulate what you do intuitively, that's where it becomes really difficult. Yes. Like yes, why you're exactly. choosing to do something or put something somewhere, or you put, put a color there and in order to be able to c carry people along. Yes. Cause often you don't know you're reacting in the moment to something, you know, and sometimes yeah. it doesn't go as you think it's going to go. So you sort of uh, work around it and it, it's not, I mean, I think if I had a very definite process where you do this, then you do that, then you do that. I mean, I sort of do that, but it's, it, I think when you're demonstrating, it's a little bit, you know. Yeah. Well, and I think, I think the point too, is you have to allow people to find their own creativity, right? Cause they're not trying to create, a piece just like yours they're trying to use your no. technique and learn it to find their own voice and I think that's sometimes where it's a challenge with some of those courses right that's right yes because yeah. you're not I'm not saying you know you, this is how you make this piece that looks exactly like mine you know my whole thing somebody said to me I think the main thing I've learned from your courses is to experiment and not worry you know I mean, yeah every time it's only a piece of paper or you know whatever so Mm -hmm. Not worth worrying about. I mean, it's it's all in the doing and the learning. It's not about always having you know the the amazing. Because I find there's so much fear, and people are always worried that they have to have the perfect thing when they do it, or they're they're going to feel bad about themselves, or other people are going to, you know, laugh at them or something. But uh, there's yes, there's a lot of fear in creating. I think, and I think if you can try and get over that and just let yourself go, that's a whole different mm -hmm. the secret to it actually yeah well i guess you're you're vulnerable right because you're trying to express something that's kind of in, inside and how you feel and stuff but yeah i i agree i do, do think it holds people back and you know when we when we do these creative adventures too it's really about you know tapping into your creativity and exploring it and having fun with it as opposed to always coming out with a perfect piece but invariably if you can relax the stuff you end up with ends up being much more successful anyway in my experience that's right Yes, exactly. Yeah. When you're playing, you know, playing is this thing. When you're playing, you usually end up with the unpredictable, whereas if you're concentrating too hard, you end up with what you've always done because yeah. you feel more comfortable, you know. Well, I know you used the word serendipity earlier, which is one of my personal favorite words too. Right? Yes. But I think part of it is recognizing too when things go wrong that you can kind of freak out and toss it or else you can kind of go, okay, not what I expected, turn it upside down, see what I can do with it, and then see where it That's goes, right? right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, it's my husband's outside waving at me. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the sun coming in really low, so I'm kind of thinking you're having to move. <laughs> oh, so it's, it's an interesting process of uh, making art, but I can't imagine ever, you know, like even if I never ever sold another painting in my life, I think I'd always still do it. There's just something that's special about it. Yeah, yeah, for sure.
Yeah. And, uh, and, and I see, I like the fact too, that uh, obviously you've kind of really captured the creative piece of it in terms of the play and the production and stuff like that. But from the business point of view, I thought it was interesting that on your website, you have a 30 day money back guarantee of yeah. pieces that people buy, which uh, yeah. I don't know a lot of artists that do that. I think that's really smart. How do you actually, how do you, have, how do you manage that? Well, what I've always read about it is that there's very few times, uh, statistically, very, very few people have ever sent anything back. And anyway, I mean, even if they did, it's, it, what does it matter? I mean, it's not like the place, piece is destroyed or, you know, I mean, I want yeah. people to be happy. If anyone buys off anything of me, I want them to be happy with it. I don't want them to look at every day on the wall and think, oh, my God, why have I got that? I don't like it, you know. So yeah. it's not, there's no cost to me, really, if somebody doesn't like something and they send it back. Um, I mean, a lot of artists make it um, that if you send it back, it's at your cost. And that's the same as clothing and everything. Usually if you buy uh, clothing, yeah. on, you, you pay for return shipping. That's fair. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, the big power problem really for me at the moment is having left all the people who were buy my work and everything in Canada to come somewhere where you don't know anyone. It takes a long time to reestablish yourself again. Mm -hmm. um, and I've done that so many times because we keep moving and yet, um, I mean, I could sell something to somebody in North America, but the shipping would be horrendous. Yeah, yeah. Plus, it sounds like you're, you've are you got kind of the formula of what to do. Like you go in, you find the art community, you jump in yeah. really quickly, as quickly as you can to get integrated into that community versus sort of waiting to sit and see what happens. So you have to be pretty active about that. We were talking about uh, to, to Denise last week uh, yeah. from the artists abroad and she was in China, in Japan for a few years and she said the same thing like you have to just constantly push yourself especially at the beginning that's right I mean I remember when I first went to the UK I couldn't find any artists there were artists sort of drawing pussy cats and things like that but <laughs> there was not really any artists that were I would, what I would have considered you know seriously working at their art on a regular basis and I knew they had to be there. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was in a little gallery and I was talking to a girl and she said, oh, you know, I go to these weekend workshops sometimes. And, you know, she was an artist and she was just working part time there. And she said, would you like to go one day with me? So I signed up and we went to this wonderful place called Slenningford. It was in the UK. It was an old place owned by a beautiful old um, sort of manor house owned by a woman whose daughter used to be an artist and who had been killed in a car accident. So she used to run these as sort of a, a thing for her daughter, seeing she didn't have a daughter anymore and was in memory of her. So we mm -hmm. went to that and I met a, a girl there that I really liked and I thought um, somehow I got her email address or something and I emailed her and I never heard back from her and I thought, oh, that's funny, she seemed really nice. Why would she, you know? And I thought, well, I'm going to be pushy. I'll just call her up and say you know I didn't hear from you sort of thing <laughs> and she said oh yes you know I didn't get it or just something like that but you know we ended up by being best friends when we were there and I oh, thought that's great. Well, if I hadn't made the effort you know I would have missed out on that whole thing and through her I met so many other people so mm -hmm. sometimes you know you feel awful but sometimes you know you forget that other people have their lives and they've been there for ages and you know and yeah, yet she had always been looking for somebody who shared the same interest as she did. So, you know, yeah. you just never know. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that, yeah, that's great. And I, and I think it is important. Like, I think it's uh, you kind of sometimes have to step out of your own head and kind of realize other people have a lot of stuff going on. And it isn't always yeah. about, you know, obviously it isn't that she didn't want to hang out with you because you became really good friends. So. That's right, yes, but it was just, you know, yeah, it's just one of those things, you know, and we found too, like when we went, we were living in York in the UK, and I don't think a lot of people move in from out of York, um, so people don't realise that maybe you'd like to meet some friends or maybe you'd like to be asked over for a coffee or something like that. Whereas when you, one other time we moved uh, to the States and we moved into uh um, suburb, I guess, where there were a lot of um, international transferees, and you just met people really quickly because there were a lot of people coming in who were sort of wanting the same sort of thing, sort of. So right. people were a little bit more outgoing, and it wasn't that the people in York were unfriendly; that they just didn't realise because it was something that they'd always grown up there. Their friends had grown, you know, they'd grown up with school friends, and 
mm-hmm. life was complete to them. You know, they sort of. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't occur to them too that to meet new people, you have to make that effort because they haven't had to ever really do it, right? That's right. No, it's always yeah. been there for them. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh well, yeah, that's so. Oh, that's cool. And it was. I'm just. I'm looking forward to seeing how uh, how you kind of survive in your new community and with your new art and how it ends up looking out. So that's really cool. Are you planning on doing anything differently this time? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I was playing around the other day, combining printmaking and and painting. So that was sort of a, nothing very successful, but it was good fun. <laughs> well, well, that's good. That's all you need, right? <laughs> But yes, I don't know where it's going to take me yet. But anyway, um, it's, it's uh, still in, enjoyable. So that's the main thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I miss all the group of news in Canada. I mean, it was um, after finally getting into the um, OSA or, you know, being yeah. part of that group. That was nice. I see you're a member there now too, I think, aren't you? The OSA? Oh, I am. And I'm such a terrible, horrible member. I have really not... Uh, leverage that organization at all which is really unfortunate I keep meaning to yes and of course you've been very involved with the um, artist network yeah yeah that's yeah that's that's taken a lot of my time and especially with COVID having to kind of convert everything digitally and get the artists on board digitally has just been really a little bit overwhelming but very time consuming so I do need to focus a bit more on my own I think art practice and you know sort of yeah, promoting my art practice and within uh, OSA is probably a good way of doing it because I know a number of my friends have become much more involved and I could see that it's uh, it's been good. Yes, yeah, well, I didn't do a lot. I used to do the postings for uh, Facebook. I think it was Facebook or, the, or Instagram, I can't remember which one. <laughs> but mm-hmm. that's, uh, so that sort of kept me in a little bit in contact. But, um, yeah. yeah, it was a nice group. And, and yes, we enjoyed our time in uh, Toronto. I, I think it's a great city. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, but like yeah, life changes. Lots of yeah, lots for sure. Of, uh, <laughs> lots of for what would you call it? Um, experiences and um, yeah, so nothing's. It's all exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think. Well, I think change is always good, right? It's kind yeah, of uh, it helps push you in different directions. And I think even sometimes when at the time things seem like they're bad, like of course the whole COVID thing, which has been horrible for a lot of people, but yes. I think it does sometimes force you to you know, adjust and rethink and, you know, pause for a bit. And I think any sort of major change in your life will, will do that for you, right? Yes, and I think COVID was sort of a blessing to a lot of people because in the shutdown originally, they had to find things to do. So some a lot of people started doing art and other things. Yeah. And a lot of, I think, fathers found more time with their children. And, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Out of something, well, you know, horrible, sometimes a lot of good things happen. Well, and that's hoping we can, uh, you know, get past the horribleness of COVID and hang on to some of those good things. That'd be nice. <laughs> and let's hope our numbers go down today. We have a, uh, there's always a broadcast each day at one o'clock from the Prime Minister or the Health uh, Minister talking about what, what's happened during the day. And so we're hoping that the numbers will be down again and that, you know, within another couple of weeks, we'll all be back to normal again. Yeah, well, I certainly hope so. Yeah, and I, and I, yeah, and I look forward to seeing what you create. So um, maybe you could just share with everybody your website and your Instagram and stuff so they can kind of find you and follow you. Ah, uh, yes. Now, that's I can't remember what the Instagram one is. I think it's SuzanneClark.art. And remember, when you're ever looking for my name, it's Suzanne spelt S-U-S-A-N-N-E rather than S-U-Z. People are always right. correcting it and then finding they can't find me. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. so my website, SuzanneClark.com. No E on Clark. And uh, so you can, most of the information is on there, I think. Okay. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you chatting. It was so great to catch up with you. Yes, you too. Lovely to talk to you. I sort of, uh, yes. So it's been yeah, a great so idea. We finally got to it today. <laughs> I know. Crazy, huh? And, uh, yes. and yeah, do, uh, I, well, obviously you'll post, I guess, on Instagram. I look forward to kind of seeing your journey and seeing what you do. And you've kind of made me all excited about printmaking again. <laughs> <laughs> you can always do my course <laughs> I could <laughs> I need to find a little press I guess I really like that too, the tactile piece of printmaking I have to say the physicality of it I always yes. really enjoyed Yeah. Yes. and you don't need a big one like when I bought my one I, I mean there's huge presses 
When I bought my one, it, 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 as I say, it's about seven, I can do 17 inches just over by probably 36 inches. But how yeah. often do you really want to frame something that is that size? Because it has to really be framed or mounted some way. So That's in right. fact, I would have bought a smaller one if I'd realized that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, good thing. thinking. Yeah. Although it's I, nice to have I, the flexibility, I guess. Yes, but yeah, I think the smaller one would have been perfect. But anyway, that's just my thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll remember that piece of advice when I decide to go buy a press. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you so much. It was really fabulous and have a great day because you're just starting your day. So enjoy. And we've got a long weekend here. So we're just starting our long weekend. Yeah, it's a beautiful sunny day outside and the birds are tweeting. And so we're going to go for a big walk or do something. something nice. Oh, lovely. Can't go to a winery. They're all closed at the moment, but never mind. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. <laughs> okay. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And Bye. Goodbye. And uh, next week coming up, we've got uh, Michael Wills and we've got uh, James Fowler coming up. So hopefully we'll see you usual time, Thursday at 11 a.m., assuming that Instagram isn't broken again. Have a great long weekend, everyone. Bye, Suzanne. Bye.